align the sights without disrupting the sights, break the shot. Take it to the sky, take it to the floor. Huge difference, right? And I'm gonna take it to the floor. Bridge, keeping that thumb high, bearing down pinky pressure. Instead of being uh, fragile within that stance or kind of stationary and stuck, we need to be able to absorb, mitigate recoil and environmental forces. Those environmental forces could be our backup. They could be literally anything that's around us, right? To in impact or implement force upon us. Things change, right? We're standing on what? Kind of gravel underneath grass. And we can, we have great traction in this kind of environment. But what about up there when it's just gravel and now cement? Think of all the contact environmental surfaces that you've been in contact with just leaving your home to come to this course. And then think about within your occupation and your job. From point A to point B, you're adapting to things. Law enforcement officers, you're going to, into shit drug houses and these shit drug houses have shit literally everywhere, stepping over stuff. And if you had to manage to stop, build a stance that's going to be sustainable, adaptable, and, and then also mobile so that you can get the hell out of Dodge if you needed to, you need to be able to brace and take a shot and build that platform so that all seven fundamentals are built off a sustainable engagement stance, right? Stance is extremely important, guys, and a lot of people just kind of blow over it. Offset your feet, about shoulder width apart, take your heel, uh, your toe from your arch of your uh, non-dominant side leg and offset your dominant side leg to the rear non-dominant side leg forward. And then your hips are gonna be square, which wherever the hips go, the shoulders then what? follow right so as long as I am now perpendicular to the gun and the objective that I now intend to engage I'm gonna be able to take on that recoil right of the gun but then think of the environmental or the environment that you're operating in and the environmental forces your backup your friends your family that posture needs to be forward no I don't mean bent in at the waist knees slightly bent toes together who was taught that in the Marine Corps military law enforcement everything all right, this is how I was taught to shoot a rifle. Toe to toe, lean in at the hips, and lock everything out. Whether it was pistol, lock everything out, right? Is this mobile? No, because what do I have to do in order to move? Stand up, right? So we already know it's not mobile. What about sustainability of recoil, impulse and force left, right, front, or aft? Is it able to absorb, mitigate recoil? Boat support, boat support, boat support, right? No, what is it doing? It's taking that abrupt, abrupt, acute recoil impulse from that nine millimeter bullet, sending it straight back into the shoulders and then literally pushing that individual back. And they have no athleticism in that stance to then combat it and absorb it. And I want to see your guys' postures actually engage rather than just be existing, existent, right? Or not negative. I don't wanna see a centralized posture. When I say centralized, this is zero. I wanna see something that's a little bit forward, which is basically if you watch my chest and my ass, you're just driving it far and forward. Now I can absorb, mitigate recoil, and that recoil stops in my upper extremity, most likely entering my elbows, never actually affecting my center line. If I was going down to a left side prone around the car, notice where my base is at, my top legs forward, and look at the spread between the legs. I'm not laying like this, right? Because then the recoil is going to take the path of least resistance and take me for the ride. In order to absorb and mitigate recoil, I widen my base, and now I can absorb and mitigate recoil. Same thing when I go to the other side, right? Top legs over, wide base, hips, shoulders perpendicular. Is that not a stance that you might find yourself in, in a real world situation, especially around vehicles, right? These are things we have to focus on within the stance. It's not a boring topic. It's not a topic that we can just say stance. You've been standing your entire lives. Let's just stand more athletically, right? Good. All right, go ahead and holster. Hey guys, Jason Nemo with Cloud Defensive and we just finished up baseline carbine with Achilles Heel Tactical. So I've been shooting for probably 16, 17 years, was in law enforcement for nine years. Um, I consider myself a good shooter, not necessarily an exceptional shooter, um, but with shooting I, I kind, of, kind of always view it like a golf swing. You can be a really, really good golfer, but if you don't golf for six months and go out, you're not going to be good. You've got to get out there get the repetitions in, get those reps in and get better. So that's one thing I appreciate about coming out here with uh, Rick and training is you're gonna get that baseline and you can take that baseline course over and over and over again. It's not even necessarily a beginner's course, it's just that baseline and you always wanna go back and revisit the fundamentals. I've been friends with Rick for a while and trained with him before. Um, awesome class as usual. One thing I appreciate about these classes and 
I think a lot of new, new shooters kind of have this, um, not difficulty, but problem with the mindset of they think they're gonna show up and leave this tremendously better shooter. And I've had that problem in the past, but I think the best thing about Rick's classes is he gives you all these fundamental things to work on. So I'm not necessarily trying to leave this exponentially better shooter. I now know what I need to work on and now I can go home and work on those things repeatedly and then become a better shooter. With a lot of courses like this, when you have an instructor like Rick, people look at him and they see this, this fit, former military, former sniper, foreign law, former law enforcement, former SWAT guy, and you get intimidated. And when I've trained with Rick before and here, there's always females in the class, there's always new shooters. There was a guy that had never taken a rifle course before. And uh, Rick doesn't have that typical law enforcement, military, arrogant attitude. He's a very humble teacher. Um, he'll admit when he's wrong. He talks about past mistakes. He's a very skilled shooter, but you don't see any of that arrogance or cockiness. He's just confident in the way that he teaches and he always um, relates it to the shooter and dumbs down the information. So he's not talking up here. Even if the information's up here, he puts it down here in layman terms so everybody can understand it. John, if I oh, get all eight shots in, I'm going for the ninth right in the lens. Savage. So. <laughs> Make sure you compensate for a mechanical offset. I'm gonna go draw a little Sharpie line on you. You need your, to aim uh, right <laughs> in the center of the dead cat. <laughs> I thought it was a bunny. <laughs>